it's every subject. Uh, as a technology specialist, I work with teachers from English, history, math, and science, uh, and the technology reaches all those classrooms, whether it's helping students in an English class collaborate on an essay and having uh, teachers give feedback immediately using things, something like Google Apps to uh, in the science classroom, using the iPad to look at an anatomy app and have that 3D modeling of the human body. Uh, just uh, so the technology, device, web applications reaches every single uh, subject matter. There is a waiting board for um, activities or a certain time limit for how long if they have to wait to do something. So say if they're not supposed to be interrupting, you can give them the iPad, it shows a timer, and it gives them, shows two options of what their activities could be done. So that's new this year for us. Uh, it's called the iPad Playground. Uh, it's a fun area where students uh, from District 214 have prepared, prepared presentations on specific apps uh, for the iPad that um, they will be presenting on and sharing with our attendees. Um, we noticed that there's a, definitely an uptick in the amount of iPads that are uh, kind of making their way into the classroom. So we thought this was a great opportunity to, for teachers to hear from students. And that was important because it's one thing to hear from other teachers, that's great, but to hear from the source, the people that are receiving, the, 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 that are learning in the classroom and, and these iPads are making the most impact on, how is it helping them? And from their own eyes and ears and mouth, uh, for them to share is a great opportunity for us. Most school districts have this already under their computers, but if you can't find it on your computer, it will cost you $30, and it's compatible with Mac and PC. So, QuickTime Pro, yes. The iPad is faster. You have access to a lot more resources. And again, there's so many different apps out there for education that you have students who learn in different ways. You can really teach to those different ways much more quickly on an iPad. So that, that actually can become part of I've had a passion for coding for a long time and, and trying to you know create apps and uh, programs that can make a difference. But I think the best thing, the most difference I could make is to share that passion and to share that enthusiasm with, with young people and, and get them excited about it and, and having an opportunity to create things together. They're, they're engaged with it. They think it's just fantastic. And, and amazing they the seventh graders that do the the design and demolition class there's a red square somewhere that has holes in it what that is is they design a bridge in a simulator program that would let them simulate um, compression and tension forces and then they had to measure the angles of the connectors they had made in that simulator program and draw that out in SketchUp. You know, technology, because we have these devices, you know, students are, uh, with their mobile devices, their iPods, their iPads, their cell phones, you know, they're talking to each other about these things. And uh, if we can kind of connect with them on that level and use the same devices in the classroom, then we can reach them uh, in what they're already using them for. Uh, kids are more eager to learn um, using these devices. It's no longer a novelty for them. Uh, it's something that they do every day. A lot of times it's gameplay for them at home, um, but now they're really seeing the use for some of these tools that the app creators are developing. Start small. So find one thing that you learned today. So one thing that you learned today and just start there. Just say, I'm just going to try out whatever. Tweeting, Schoology, Google Forms, EduCreations, iPad apps just one and just dig in not for a day not for a couple days not for a week for a month for a quarter and get good at it and get comfortable Here's my